It has come to my attention that the shampoo and conditioner I have is involved in the lawsuit with an ingredient that causes hair loss. The brand is OGX, which I have the shampoo and conditioner of, and I thought I'd pick good ones. They're sulfate free, they have tea tree oil, which is a natural antifungal like ketoconazole, it has peppermint oil, a natural hair growth stimulant, like a natural minoxidil, ultra hydrating and nourishing. It's all a lie. And it's a Johnson Johnson product, of course. First row game, the B word. And now these OGX shampoo and conditioners cause your hair to fall out. One, row game, which is just brand new minoxidil, doesn't cause hair loss, and neither do these shampoos. It causes hair shedding, which is temporary and reversible. Two, is there actually any credence to this lawsuit? Not really. Anyone can start a lawsuit, and people are sharing without thinking critically about this. I actually looked up the lawsuit, which wasn't passed on in the retweets, and you can see that Larissa Whipple, on behalf of herself and all others similarly situated, bring this class action against Johnson & Johnson and alleges on personal knowledge, investigation of her counsel, and on information and belief as follows. Not sounding so official now, right? Plaintiff purchased the products because of Johnson & Johnson's uniform false representation that the products would smooth, nourish, soften, and repair, and or revive her hair. She actually believes that you can actually revive hair with shampoo and conditioner to begin with. Undisclosed by Johnson & Johnson, the products contain an ingredient or a combination of ingredients that cause significant hair loss and or scalp irritation upon proper application. This is all mainly about an ingredient known as DMDM hydantin. It's a preservative that releases formaldehyde, and it's not by accident. Formaldehyde has a lot of scientific uses, such as being an industrial disinfectant, preserving dead animals, permanent pressed clothing, furniture, it's in raw food, it's produced when you're cooking food from smoke, comes from cigarettes, exhaust fumes, smog, it's basically just everywhere. And get this, DMDM hydantin isn't the only formaldehyde releaser. It's just the one that's coming under fire right now. You've probably never smelled formaldehyde from your shampoo. And if you aren't, it's probably because you're not woken up and you're using a shampoo that has a bunch of fragrance in it. Wake up! There's a threshold for safety. And with a lot of things in the drug industry, the dose is what makes the poison. So there are guidelines to make sure you're not getting poisoned. So while formaldehyde is technically a carcinogen, it's a lot safer than the bacteria and yeast that would be infecting your products if it wasn't there. It's even used in the V word. And this is just pure speculation, but if formaldehyde is so ever present in our lives, don't you think it would have some kind of side effect or reaction just from living life? I don't have a lot of hair, so I feel like the few hairs that I have left, I would definitely notice them if they're gone. And if anything, my hair has only been improving since I've been using this shampoo. Though I've been, of course, doing other treatments, watch my other videos. Now, there is some credence to some of the claims, because with many things, people can develop sensitivities, and if you're sensitive to it, you may experience scalp irritation. And scratching an inflamed itchy scalp can cause shedding or hair loss. I have heard that people have said their hair has grown back when switching products. Maybe they're the sensitive ones. I haven't seen these tweets specifically, but I can argue the same thing, but perhaps for a different reason. Do you know what else causes scalp irritation? Untreated dandruff, also known as seborrheic dermatitis, as you can see around my hairline, I have some lightened skin, which is due to letting dandruff get out of control. That's basically where it would flake off, TMI. Even though there is tea tree in this OGX product, it really isn't enough to keep my dandruff in check. Just how like the peppermint oil also in here is enough to exactly replace minoxidil as a hair growth stimulant. I wish I could do all natural things too, but sometimes you just need the real deal. Anyone with curly hair or dry hair has probably learned that you can improve your hair quality and appearance if you occasionally skip shampoo. But this can have dangerous consequences for some. Like lately, I've just been using conditioner or I'll be in the other bathroom that might not have the ketoconazole shampoo. So I'll reach for the OGX shampoo. And before I know it, it might be a week or two, maybe longer before I've used the ketoconazole shampoo. Because that stuff is harsh on your hair, it kinda sucks. And I'm sure a lot of people already know that and try not to use it when they don't need it. And this isn't to say that anyone who's had issues with a, a Tresemme or, or OGX product because of the formaldehyde is some kind of secret dandruff sufferer. It's just that you should explore all the potential causes for your hair loss or shedding before you start throwing out your shampoo and conditioner bottles. Just because trying to find the clear, cleanest, purest shampoo and conditioner can be a game of whack-a-mole. Because something tells me it's probably not your shampoo and conditioner. Like maybe it is dandruff. 
Here's a really cool conditioner that I've been using for a while. It's vegan, non-GMO, paraben free, gluten free, soy free, cruelty free, no sulfates, phthalates, no artificial colors, pretty much all the isms. Oh, but it does have potassium sorbate, which apparently is a carcinogen. So instead of throwing out your shampoo and conditioners and stressing out about finding a replacement product, make sure you're exploring all potential causes of hair loss and or shedding, because it's probably not your shampoo and conditioner. Sometimes your units are swapped out just to please the masses, and the replacement isn't any better, or maybe it's less effective. I used to think eating super clean was gonna solve all sorts of health problems, but what really did it for me was just exercising consistently. So when I had my braces on, which you can see in other videos, I would eat like a pint of ice cream every day, but I started working out, you know, sometimes three, sometimes five days a week, and that solved all sorts of issues that eating healthy just wouldn't do. Everything in life is slowly killing you, but you need to find the things that are causing the most damage. And sometimes these little trace ingredients that you see lawsuits about aren't the answer. So you need to focus on the things that are gonna have the greatest impact and switching out shampoo and conditioners, it might make a difference, it might not, but that neither of these are gonna attack DHT in your scalp or any other kind of possible reason for you losing your hair. It's probably gonna be DHT though. This lawsuit is kind of pathetic and it's based off of conjecture rather than evidence. So this is one of the things you shouldn't put too much effort into. I mean, I did make a whole video on it, but I know I've been a victim of these kind of thought processes and hopefully I can save someone else from the same thing.